Many inquiring minds have wondered how strong were Neanderthal women. We have very few female Neanderthal skeletons, but the limited data we do have indicates that archaic females were strong as hell. In fact, they were much stronger than modern females in comparison to the strength difference between modern and archaic males. Indeed, far from being gracile and feminine, Neanderthaloid females were no delicate creatures. They may not have been beauties by today's standards, but they were built for survival in an unforgiving prehistoric world. These prehistoric women were wild, untamed savages. Female Neanderthals, like female gorillas, had larger pelvises and a lower center of gravity than Homo sapiens, which would make them formidable grapplers. Neanderthal women had a tremendously thicker neck than any modern-day woman has to support their heavy, elongated skull. Both the back of the skull and the powerful chinless jaw show areas of muscle attachment that made such a neck undeniable. Similarly, the cheeks were strong in conformity with the dictates of the muscle masses needed to operate that heavy jaw. The brow ridges were tremendously heavy on the Neanderthal race, even on their women. Neanderthal woman's nose was unquestionably large and wide. The longer, wider opening in the nasal of the skull indicates that very clearly, and there is very little bony support at the top of the nose. Gorilla-like, too, is the Neanderthal hormonal condition. Estrogen is considered the female hormone, while testosterone is considered the male hormone. However, both hormones exist in both sexes. Surprisingly, women have more testosterone than estrogen. Modern women's normal estrogen levels range between 30 and 400 picograms per milliliter. Their testosterone levels are still significantly lower than men's, but the testosterone to estrogen ratio is surprising. The normal range for testosterone levels is 300 to 1000 nanograms for men and 15 to 70 nanograms for women. But archaic women likely possessed more testosterone based on their larger estimated body mass. Androgens, like steroids, have well-documented side effects, especially as increased aggression and larger muscles. Testosterone is thought to be both the cause and the result of asserting dominance through aggressive means. A large body of research on territorial aggression has found that elevated levels of circulating androgens, including testosterone, are associated with more aggressive behavior during the breeding season. Indeed, scientists believe both male and female Neanderthals had a strong androgenic phenotype, which means they had elevated male hormones. The researchers claim that Neanderthals had unique biomechanical adaptations and a hormonal condition that was distinct from any hormonal condition found in modern humans, whether normal or pathological. Living in a cold northern climate, eating mostly red meat-based diets, and genetic predisposition could all have contributed this condition. Neanderthaloid postcranial skeletons are generally strong, indicating that the body was capable of producing and resisting significant forces. Edible plants were scarce in colder climates, and the vegetation period was brief. With little fruit and vegetables, the Neanderthals specialized in hunting terrestrial herbivores, like mammoths and forest deer. Their diet then consisted nearly exclusively of proteins and lipids, which must have had an impact on their hormones and bones. Many differences between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens can be explained as a secondary consequence of the hyper-specialized body proportions of the Neanderthals, as well as the preservation of the primitive condition of other hominoids. In terms of morphology, archaic females and Neanderthal females are more similar to modern females than Neanderthal and archaic males are to modern males. This is because modern males are much more gracile when compared to their ancient counterparts. In comparison to anatomically modern humans, both male and female Neanderthals experienced higher upper extremity loading than Homo sapiens. What's more, researchers discovered that early prehistoric European female skeletons had bones similar in strength to today's female athletes. Neanderthals also differed from modern humans by having a greater functional difference between the sexes. Neanderthal males had massive right arms, whereas Neanderthal females' arms were more evenly matched and less muscular. However, when compared to female college athletes, the prehistoric female arms were 11 to 16% stronger for their size. 
The ancient female arms were also 30% stronger than the non-athlete arms examined in the study. Another study discovered that, based on standardized dimensions, female Neanderthals' biceps muscles were 18.7% larger than their modern counterparts. Female Neanderthals had 38.7% larger biceps areas than the average modern human. Male Neanderthals were able to generate forearm flexor tension approximately 138% higher than the average modern male. Based on these rough estimates, female Neanderthal arms appear to have been up to 50% stronger than modern human females. The Neanderthal lower arm morphology reflects a strong and short forearm, whereas the forearms of Homo sapiens are less powerful. What's more, analysis of female Neanderthal bones indicates that they had disproportionately large biceps and triceps. But according to researchers, the unusually powerful right arms of female Neanderthals were due to a life spent scraping animal skins for clothing and shelter. Stocky Neanderthal females would likely have been directly involved in the hunt more than fragile, delicate Homo sapiens females. Neanderthals were most likely social hunters, and by both sexes, working cooperatively were likely able to have been more successful hunters. In fact, Neanderthals seem to have less rigid division of labour than modern hunter-gatherers, with men and women both engaging in hard and dangerous activities. Many of the Neanderthals discovered by archaeologists had massive forearms, possibly from a life spent stabbing woolly mammoths and straight-tusked elephants to death and dismantling their carcasses. Both men and women would have participated in the latter activity as well as carrying hundreds of kilograms of meat many miles up steep mountainsides to their caves. Regardless of gender, Neanderthal muscle mass is expected to have been significantly higher than that of modern humans. The largest female Neanderthal specimen ever discovered, at Grotte du Prince near the French Riviera, lived around 100,000 years ago, has an estimated body mass of 74 kilograms, 163 pounds. Meanwhile, the Chinese Jinyushan specimen is estimated to weigh around 78.5 kilograms, 173 pounds, making her the largest ancient female specimen in the fossil record, and she would have been a shot-put terror. The female skeleton from Jinyushan is estimated to have been around 165 centimetres, 5 feet 5 inches tall in life. Initially, the fossils were thought to be from a male specimen because they were so large, but later analysis revealed that they were actually from a female specimen. In accordance with Allen's rule and Bergman's rule, the Jinyushan female's large body, wide trunk and short limbs are to be expected, as the hominins of that time relied more on their physical body as a cold adaptation, as their technological culture was. Body mass is calculated using a formula based on bone length and circumference, and Neanderthaloid females possessed massive bones. In one study, estimates from 26 Neanderthal specimens revealed an average weight of 63 to 66 kilograms, 139 to 146 pounds, for females indicating a significantly higher average body mass than modern and ancient Homo sapiens females. The Lady of Tabun Neanderthal skull and skeleton was discovered at Tabun Cave in Mount Carmel in the Levantine Corridor. This female Homo neanderthalensis skull is approximately between 130,000 and 50,000 years old. It was extensively studied and taught paleoanthropologists a lot about female Neanderthal anatomy and behavior, at a time when little was known about our enigmatic evolutionary cousins. Neanderthals and Homo sapiens can be divided into early, middle and late populations, with the latter displaying more gracile characteristics as a result of inheriting genes from Homo sapiens. Neanderthal specimens from 300,000 years ago exhibit significantly greater physical strength and body mass than those from 50,000 years ago. For example, the 200,000-year-old Omo I early Homo sapiens fossil from Ethiopia, formerly known as the Man of Kibish, was a young female adult at the time of death, as evidenced by the morphology of the pelvis, which now indicates that she was a female. The female hominin's body mass was estimated to be around 74 kilos, 163 pounds. In modern humans, height measurements based on femoral head diameter estimate the Omo one stature to be 171 to 184 centimetres, 
about 5 feet 6 inches to 6 feet tall. For female-specific height models, the clavicle predicts a height of 181 to 184 centimeters, 5 feet 9 inches to 6 feet tall. And while the leg bones are not sufficiently intact to provide a more precise height estimate, a 6 foot tall 163 pound ancient woman would be quite impressive. The post-crania fossils of Omo 1 were originally described as a strongly built male, displaying well-developed muscular impressions, but some researchers identified the Omo 1 femur as bearing more resemblance to a sample of modern human females, based on several measurements. Interestingly, the dating and location of this fossil coincide with the so-called mitochondrial Eve hypothesis. Theoretically, this fossil could even be the mythological mother of all of us. Neanderthals are frequently regarded as the stray branch in the human family tree, but new research suggests that the modern human is more likely to be the oddity of human evolution. In terms of the evolution of our family tree, the genus Homo, we are the outliers, while the Neanderthals are closer to the core. In fact, modern humans have roughly twice the number of uniquely distinct traits as Neanderthals. In other words, Neanderthals are more like the other members of our family tree than modern humans are. In the larger sweep of human evolution, the more unusual group is not Neanderthals, whom we tend to look at as strange, weird and unusual, but us, modern humans. And with that statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other videos. Thank you and take care.